Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Harris, and welcome to Life Questions, where we provide answers to the life's questions, showing what the ancient Bible has to say about modern living in the 21st century. You know, it seems that the problems we face today are not unlike those of the people who lived centuries ago. But you know, the principles of life are constant, spanning all generations. We appreciate the many questions that you, the viewers, have sent us. And some of those questions will be answered by a panel of ministers that we've assembled here today, and I'd like to introduce them to you at this time. First off, we have Pastor Brandon Green of the Calvary Chapel of Praise here in Lima. Next, Pastor Michael Lyons of In Faith Ministries, also of Lima. Followed by Reverend Jeremy Mann of Emmanuel United Church of Christ of Bluffton, Ohio. And rounding up our panel is Pastor Michael Wyckoff of the Joy Harvest Fellowship, also of Lima, Ohio. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us. Happy to be here. And we should mention for our viewers that later on we'll be telling you how you can send in your questions to us for future programs. To start, gentlemen, let me try to set the stage here. Uh, on the political scene, the latest round is this whistleblower issue that has come up. And um, with that, there have been new calls for impeachment and the like of the President of the United States. It's become extremely divisive in this country, has it not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say that it, 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 we all know that it has spilled over into to the church as well. There are some on both sides of the political aisle that have their opinions to say about this. What is the role of the Christian minister and the church for that matter in all this divisiveness? What is the role that we play as ministers to bring peace and harmony in, in our society as God would have us to do. How do we do that? There's so much energy out there mm -hmm. towards divisiveness. Mm -hmm. Nobody's all that eager to jump in, I see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, we, you know, we, we talked about this earlier. We did. What do we, what do, we do? And, and then we have, to, we have to also maintain our status of not being on one side of the political aisle versus the other for our tax exempt status and that's right. things like mm, that's that. That's right. Uh, all that has to be considered. But nonetheless, we have to speak truth. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a very thin line we're walking. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and start. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I think that the bottom line is what you said and in, in in that last word with the T. Uh, we have to just speak the truth. And uh, I think we, we really have an easy out if we stick to the truth of the gospel and understanding that in, in telling the truth that um, we're going to have some folk who simply aren't going to be in agreement with truth uh, but that's our responsibility right. and 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 we don't have to try to you know I, I like the fact that if you read you know scripture was clear and Jesus was referred to a, the stumbling the rock of offense yeah. the, the, you know we don't have to be offensive but truth will always offend wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, I think we have to settle it. The fact that, you know, there may be some folks that won't necessarily agree, um, and, and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to try to still love and allow the truth to be given with the kind spirit, uh, and then let, let God bring the increase in the way that He will. Yeah. I feel like um, as a pastor, our weekend services um, should not be politicized. I think we get enough of that bantering uh, on both sides, depending on which network you like. Uh, <laughs> um, I feel like, um, as my brother shared, that the truth of God, God's word will always remain. I feel it's important to continue to declare the truth of God's word um, and to remember that uh, opinions will come and go. Uh, there'll be shifts in culture but the word of God will last forever. Mm -hmm. And that to continue to remind the people about the word of God, what the promises of God say, and not get so caught up on um, you know, all of the divisiveness that we are seeing through especially media. Now, one key that you hear that I wanna follow up on, and we're still on the same thing, but the shift in culture, as you call uh -huh. it, which gives some the argument that, well, with the shift in culture, that means that what used to be right can now be wrong. What used to be wrong can now be right. And some people are hanging their hat on that. That's this right. is a different day, and that, that old fogeyism of the past <laughs> is gone. Yeah. 
Well, there's so, really nothing new under the sun. <laughs> no, there's I, th no. I, I think if you go back to the early days of the church, you know, the Roman Empire wasn't exactly, um, wasn't politically correct to uh, say a few things, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and there was, uh, just read Corinthians, you know, what was going on in the church, you know, someone living with his father's wife and, and um, you know, you just had a lot of sin, let's just put mm -hmm. it that way, uh, in the church. So, but uh, I, I would go even, f you know, further that it's the, our pastor's responsibility to remind our, our folks, regardless of their political stripes, that, you know, when you vote, are you going to vote according to what scripture plainly says. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you don't mention a candidate's name, you don't mention a political party, but you mention what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And, but you tie that to their vote well, and their responsibility to, yeah. to vote in that direction. Would you say that it is becoming increasingly more difficult for Christians to vote simply because they are seeing one set they're of both bad, right? Yeah. Well right. they're seeing yeah, they're seeing yeah. one set of corruption right. over here right. and another right. set of corruption well, over there. Okay. Yeah. And both parties are saying that, you know, right. in essence, well we, we have well, the essence of God. I, you know, in, in my own family, you know, there's no agreement. Uh, and I don't know if anybody <laughs> does have a family where there's an agreement. But I think you have to look at the platform. You have to look at what they represent. Nobody is a perfect candidate. Everybody has skeletons in their closet. Oh, some and people have warm bodies in their closet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So what do they That's stand fine. for on this issue uh, where the Bible has a, a, a very clear position? What does candidate A, who is a, might be a lousy sinner, say? And what does candidate B, who also might be a lousy sinner, say? Mm -hmm. um, you know, no one is perfect and n no one is the, the perfect candidate from a moral standpoint. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So where do you go? You go to what they are representing and what they're going to do when they get into office. Okay. Well, in order for that to take place, though, you also need a, a voter base that's taking those initiatives and looking at those platforms and comparing them exactly. and doing the extra research. And I don't necessarily know that mm. a large portion of our voting majority have that Good point. energy or that time to put into that and so they're listening to snippets and they're listening to mm -hmm. those little quotes and they're looking at their social media and seeing mm -hmm. what other people are saying about it mm -hmm. and a lot of times you do have these right. political parties who are claiming Christianity as their own as if That's right. their form of Christianity and their understanding and their interpretation yeah. of their faith and of scripture is the right one mm -hmm. right. and then the other half of that is they're ending that statement with then and everyone else is wrong or they're not biblical mm -hmm. or they're not and I don't know that that's necessarily accurate. But that's where our responsibility comes in. Right, you have to, to take, say, all right, here's yeah. where yes. the Bible, you know, here is where Christ would stand. Here is what the Word of God says. Now you all decide where you want to go. P Pastor Mike, you said something that I, I, I really think that we, we can push on a little bit more. You know, the, the scripture's clear that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. so, so at the end of the day, I, I think that if we're trying to, uh, we have to have the knowledge to understand that this world system, is trying to shape and conform the behaviors mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. in a direction that supports a, a, a sinful government, a one that's not one coming from uh, the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take it all the way to what, what really matters the most is the fact that when we begin to think about our politicians and we begin to think about those platforms, it is the laws that come in that makes the difference in changing mm -hmm. our society. Uh, laws affect our society, our society affects our culture, and our culture affects our behavior. Yeah. So yeah. when you change a law, you now are setting that law up to eventually influence our behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a child, uh, wearing seat belts was, was not a law. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I grew up very much not wearing my seat belt. Mm -hmm. uh, when the law changed, um, it, I had to begin to, our society changed, and we started wearing our seat. Then our culture, it became culturally, and then next thing you know, it became a behavior. My daughters and my kids who were raised with the law, it is natural for them to put their seatbelt on. Sure, sure. It is still unnatural for me. I still now have to remember to do it <laughs> because the law changed, and they was raised in that law. So when we as Christians understand that we have individuals who are wanting to pass laws yeah. that are going to go totally opposite 
of lending itself to the behavior of individuals, we want to be aware of that. Right. Because that's going to lend you right directly to what is going to influence the will of God in the life of the people on, on, this, on this planet. So, so we, we want to be mindful to understand that when I begin to come in agreement with someone who's wanting to pass laws mm -hmm. in a certain direction, then I've got to make sure that I'm wise enough not to necessarily partner uh, with that agreement because that agreement is getting ready to set up a nature that maybe after that law is passed, it is natural for me to think same-sex marriage is a thing it should be. Yeah. And, I and think that's what that. And that's what people hang their head, don't they? Many people hang their head on that. Well, the law changed. The Supreme Court said that abortion is legal, so mm -hmm. how can that be wrong? Well, right. but then the Supreme Court has to answer to a higher court. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. See? I liked what he had said because we are so inundated, with, especially with social media platforms, yeah. with just tidbits of information. We are so uh, filled with information, but we're starving for revelation. We're starving as a culture uh, of understanding. And so that's why I always seek um, on Sunday mornings to remind the church that one day we're all looking for that government to sit upon his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And that today there's something the church can do about it. We can put aside our difference politically and we can remember that we are praying the will of the Father every time we declare our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. We want to release the influence of the king mm -hmm. wherever yes. we are at. Uh, we need to ser search out um, ways that the church can be more effective uh, uh, to fight social injustice. We need to find those avenues to which the church can be more effective that way and stop playing in the playground box, you know, with mm -hmm. some of this mess that we've been seeing, the bantering back and forth. You know, that, that last point you make about the government will be on his shoulders. Uh -huh. We all look forward to that day. Yeah. I think it's pointing out, is it not, the fact that when Christ comes, one of the main targets he's going after is the government. Absolutely. He's going he's gonna to knock everybody off yeah. their thrones yeah. and he will be the head of the government. Yeah for the entire world. Yes. Well, Christ has already come. Yeah. Well, the, 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 first, the, 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 the first coming has already come. Mm -hmm. And if the first coming has already come, and he says the kingdom of heaven is now at hand, mm -hmm. That's right. that the government is supposed to be ruling the life of the believers now. That government is his ruling system. That's what government is. It's the ruling system. Mm -hmm. And so that ruling system should be ruling our lives, and that ruling system is to change our behaviors. And, and that's what the Christ, that's what the kingdom of heaven is. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it has come to change and influence our behavior now to be more as his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so now, and, that, and that's, that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we have to be mindful of when we're making that prayer, mm -hmm. that everything in our life is moving in that direction right. to influence his kingdom and his will mm -hmm. to be done on this Absolutely. earth. Absolutely. Well, it, and the kingdom of God has come. Uh, the Bible says that. Yes. And mm -hmm. that is in that sense in the hearts of men. But there will be a physical oh, kingdom yeah. to come. Yes. And that's the one I was referring to. When yeah. the physical kingdom takes uh -huh. place uh, after the rapture has, has taken Christians out of this world. And, and, Absolutely. and eventually we come back. And when we do, the first thing he goes for is, is that government. Mm -hmm. Now. Until that happens, you and I have to make that distinction, do we not? That we have to separate the sinner from the sin. Uh -oh. Yeah, <laughs> do, we, do we not? You know what? We, we need to take a break. Let me let you pause and think about that. Okay. I see everybody uh, shifting in their chairs. <laughs> Shift, uh, si shifting in the chairs. Let's take a break right now. We want to let you know how you can write in your questions uh, for future programs so we can answer your questions. We'll be right back. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back for some good discussion with uh, current events types of issues with a biblical perspective. You know, uh, there's the phrase, the, the phrase that's been around a long time, God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin, <laughs> making a distinction between those two. 
it, it has gotten, well, not, 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 not that that statement has gotten the church in, in trouble, but there has been trouble in that with the church calling out certain sins, there's been pushback by the world that says, oh, you're intolerant and you are bigots and you're, you're hateful mm -hmm. and you're judging me. Yeah. How do we deal with that? If we are called to point out what is sinful and still communicate to the sinner that God loves him or her and wants to draw them to himself. My dad, um, who pastored for 20 years before he went to heaven, would always say this, sinners do what sinners do. <laughs> <laughs> and so as if to say, you know, the church can be almost obsessive about the categories of people's sin. Not that that's, we don't have an issue in culture right now. But the one thing I feel like the Word of God declares is judgment begun, begins in the house of God first. Mm -hmm. Meaning, that, we need to hate our own sin uh -huh. first. And call it out. And call it, it out. Yeah. And then what I, what I really do believe is if we're standing holding signs and, and doing all of this picketing and uh, we're almost so confrontational, I don't feel that that wins anyone. Personally, I really do believe this, that my presence in your life can build a platform for my proclamation. And so that you've got to build rapport with people. If you really want to love them to life, mm -hmm. uh, you've really got to build some sort of relationship and friendship. If you consider what Jesus did, eating with sinners, mm -hmm. publicans, yes. spending time you know, with prostitutes, all of these things were shameful. Do you know who I found Jesus to be intolerant of? It wasn't the sinners. It was the Pharisees. Yeah. Yeah. The religious. Yeah. So I feel yeah, like this conversation disciples. needs to really um, begin with me, mm -hmm. uh, letting the Holy Spirit work in me, and that I begin to look at my heart. Do I, am I really loving people? Uh, am I really caring about what, where their eternal destination is? You know, and building that friendship. And it, I think it takes time. Well, I, 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 I certainly agree that we definitely have to do things with love. But there is another place I think that we have to be mindful that at the end of the day, uh, if I love you and I see your house is on fire and I don't tell you, right. it may not be too much love at all at the end of the day. That's right. So it's important that I make sure that as I show you uh, that I love you in my conversation, mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure I'm displaying mm -hmm. uh, the life that will bless you by mm -hmm. living it in your presence. Yeah. Um, and then at that point in time, prayerfully, uh, if, if I'm going to actually be that witness yeah. that God called me to be, um, that I can also ask him, help me with the conversation yeah. to introduce you to them yeah. uh, outside of the witness of my life. And, and I think that's the way we, we have to approach anything and everyone. And, and certainly um, we do need to love. Uh, mm -hmm. someone pass their sin much like God loved us mm -hmm. and uh, but continue to raise a standard before them to let right. them know right. uh, what the love of God is supposed to look like in their life right I do feel that people though on your job um, in your neighborhood they'd yeah. rather see the sermon than hear the one uh, absolutely yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely it's hard to, it's hard it's hard to give them one if you're not showing them one absolutely right. yeah. when well, in that way I personally have always struggled with identifying what sin is um, and even one of the sermons that I gave uh, when I was in high school I started uh, preaching even then uh, one of the sermons I gave was entitled what is sin and I, I've come to the conclusion that I think sin dictated uh, by society and uh, are based on our religious and theological interpretation of the day what is the context in which you are in in order to identify what those sins are and if you're gonna <clears throat> point out that someone's house is on fire I think the important thing is pointing out that it's on fire, but also expressing it in a way that is loving, mm -hmm. that is caring, and says again that I don't reject you. I'm That's not right. rejecting you. I am rejecting yeah. the fact that your house is on fire and, and, and you, need, you need to have some help. And if they don't yeah. accept that help, that can't be on me then That's right. to, right. as if it's a failure, right. but rather that I'm still living the life that I'm living and being that example mm -hmm. uh, for right. others and living out that example. And pick up a pail and Get some water, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I think that's the other thing for, for our role as pastors and our role as Christians is, is to help, sure. you know, in any way that you can. Not to the point that you're jumping into the fire yourself, but Absolutely. at least that, that you're going to offer that assistance. Pastor, you're chomping at the bit to get in. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, maybe. 
<coughs> I love, uh, I love, I think the relationship, definitely. Relationship first. Uh -huh. Because no one's going to listen to me, um, whether they agree with me or not, a lot of times until there's a relationship. And I'm talking about not from the pulpit. I'm talking That's about right. in the workplace, mm -hmm. on the street, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. And I think if people get to know you, yeah. Or maybe they not, may not know me, uh, all the details of my life, but they, they know at least where our, uh, you know, the fruit that's there. And if they know I'm associated with Jesus first, mm -hmm. okay, uh, that's a major step. But uh, the rub is, okay, so then what do you <laughs> think about <laughs> dot, dot, dot? Uh, right. And that's where you need the help of the Holy Spirit. That's where Absolutely. you have to have mm -hmm. behind that a history of prayer, meditation in the word yeah. and and prepare beforehand don't wait till it comes to the point where your friend asks you right. all right speak to me about homosexuality mm -hmm. i'm gay so what do you think you hate me now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gotta be prayed up man you gotta yeah. be read up you know Absolutely. and and ask the lord help me help me to portray the jesus that they need to see and hear now on that individual level i i think that uh, that's where it's most effective but what do you do <laughs> exactly. when you are behind the pulpit and you're speaking now broadly mm -hmm. and generally that will affect a, a society or a community? Mm -hmm. And um, do you just not talk about what is true because you're hoping that you can win them over by not addressing Ab these matters? Is Absolutely that? not. <laughs> 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 Absolutely not. We, we share the truth and, and we trust that, um, you know, the Bible's, you know, one plant, one water and God brings that's, the increase. That's it. And, and, and that's what we're going to do. And I'm not going to beat you with it. Uh, I'm going to share it and uh, let God hopefully uh, minister to your heart with it. Uh, he has to draw you by his spirit. That's so, right. so we're just the messengers to give it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that you can give it when you actually live it. Uh, you know, that's, that gives you the opportunity to give it more. And uh, most of the time, the, the witness, the sermon mm -hmm. is going to be more of your life that you're living. Yeah. Uh, but when you're speaking it, you, you have to have it backed up by the life that you're living it. Mm, and, uh, and speak it in love and then trust that God will bring yeah. the increase from it. Bill, let me add one other thing too. And I think this ties in with the last issue we were talking about, about being political. Mm. Um, it, it's kind of the same area, oh, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think our, our job as pastors, especially those who attend our church regularly and who want to be disciples, is we have to change our identity. In other words, where, what's my identity? Am I white? Am I a wasp? Am I you know, a Midwesterner? Am I a conservative? Am I a Republican? Or am I a disciple of Jesus? Now that doesn't mean that I'm not white. Doesn't mean I don't live in the Midwest. It doesn't mean right. that I, you know, that you lose your identity. whatever, exactly, all right. And you know, we have the expression now, identity politics. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm gay, or I'm this, or I'm conservative, or I voted for Trump, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we've got to change ourselves, uh, to your point, ourselves mm -hmm. first, pastors, mm -hmm. and, and also convey to our congregations, no, you are in Christ right. first. New creature. That, that's your identity. Right. And when you, when you get that across, you know, all these other things you're trying to convince them about, about whether it's biblical, whether it's not, how they should vote, you don't have to maybe preach on that if you change their identity and make sure they know who they are, if, they, if they're yeah. saved, if mm -hmm. they've received eternal life and they're following Christ. We get the greatest responsibility as ambassadors to represent Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we get to release the cultural influence of the kingdom wherever that we go. But I love the scripture that you talked about that Paul was the one who planted the seed, but yeah. Apollos gets to the water it, yes. but it's ultimately God that brings forth the increase. Mm -hmm. But sometimes in our enthusiasm, we overwater the plant. <laughs> it's drowning. <laughs> and then Which we, we, wanna why, we wanna know why people are avoiding us. <laughs> right, yeah. right, we do that. And that's, that's yeah. why it, it's a delicate um, yeah, leadership a of the Holy Spirit in our that's lives. Good to speak into people's lives. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Now, let's bring it down to the family level because you know, <laughs> some of the questions we get in uh, to this program are parents who want to express the gospel to their children. Mm -hmm. They yes. have taught their children the proper yes. way to live and now they have gone out into this new culture yes. where anything goes, so that's to speak. Right. 
Anything and they have changed their values. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And parents are more than just frustrated. Absolutely. You know, I, mean, I, I had this incident uh, just recently with two of my kids and had to be reminded of that. Well, Dad, you know, you're going to change the world. Change yourself first. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be reminded of that. But by the same token, you know, I, in my righteous, uh, righteous, um, what is it, righteous indignation, indignation, indignation. <laughs> I felt, you know, here my kids are grown, fully grown adults, and I want to protect them sure. Sure. from the sure. evils of this sure. world. Sure. And I went into that mode, and then I had to back down and, sure. and admit that, hey, you know, I, I, I spoke too soon. I think one of the, one of the greatest uh, failings of the church, if we can list them amongst the others, is our lack of ability to raise up evangelical elements within our church, meaning people who are out there who are able to express their faith, to talk mm. about their faith. Mm. I think a lot of people are not comfortable even saying the name Jesus outside of the That's church. So true. So true. And, and they'll only say yeah. it sometimes when you prompt them in the church by That's putting good. it in a, in a, yeah. in a prayer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're not comfortable having conversations, let alone our own family, but with our friends and with other yeah. people. And we don't have that uh, evangelism that's out there. What do and, we do and about that? I, I think uh, one of the responsibilities there is, is very first element is what does attending church, what does your relationship with God, your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with the Holy Spirit mean to you and in sharing that with your, with your family members. This is what this represents to me. It's not just a thing that I do every Sunday. It's not just something that I put into my regular schedule, like the run that I take in the morning and the coffee that I make every day. Mm -hmm. But rather, this is what this means to me. And I think that's where we struggle because we don't feel comfortable talking about our own faith uh, and expressing it in that way. It's not what I want for you. It's what this has done for me. And I would love for you to have that is I think where the conversation starts. What has it done That's for me? Great. There was a term um, back in the day about um, restoring the family altar. And oh, yeah. some folks wouldn't even know what that means. But I really do believe it begins by, revival really begins by, revival of truth is right here at the table. Communion, just speaking, assimilating information to your children. Mm talking about those issues and giving them the biblical standard and, uh, to wherever level that they're at. And I really do believe if we want to see the change, it's going to begin by, you know, parents raising uh, their children, raising the standard at home, equipping them, helping them understand what's going on in these shifting times. Mm -hmm. Well, I have six adult children. I have five adult children. You have five, <laughs> okay. So some of us, I think, have some experience in this area. Uh, at, looking back now, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I wouldn't be able to say this, but, you know, the Proverbs train up a child the way they should go, and when they are old, er, I, I put the ER in there, yeah. it doesn't mean yeah. 80 years old, all right? <laughs> but when they're old, they won't depart from it. And, you know, my kids have turned out, uh, to one degree or another, in the way that I wanted to in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Maybe not because of me, maybe, but, mm. but in spite of me. But it comes from what you just said. And, um, but, you know, they do. They, you know, they, build, they will depart, some of them. Not all of them. Some of them are just church mice, you know. Mm. They just, <laughs> you know, they're, they're perfect, you know. And then others are just wild. Yeah. So, really, the, the, the point I wanted to make was that they come back. Yeah. If you good. train them up, yep. they come yeah. back, and you got to pray for them. Yeah. That's good. And you, yeah. and you have to be prepared to wrap things up here. When they come back, you got to be ready. I, yeah. the, the father of the prodigal son yeah. had to be prepared. I mean, he was down there looking for that boy. We're out of time. We're out of time. So, listen, we'll be back again next week. So, stay with us. Stay with us. Stay right in that chair for the next week. We'll be right back. <laughs> bye bye. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>
Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at wtlw.com.